Hello everyone, this is Hero with the Birds with another UI video for Shadowlands PvE and WoW. And in this video, I'd like to consider key bindings. Key bindings are a part of our user interface. The first portions we talked about when we were thinking about the space that we use for our rotational or our utility skills uh, is one piece of how we interface with the game. A second one is how we you know, use our fingers or our hands to interact with the keyboard or the mouse. And so in this video, I'd like to just walk through some thoughts about how we should maybe organize your keybinds. You don't need to do it this way. Keybinds are very personal, so some people have a very per particular way in which they want to press their buttons. Some of you have almost everything bound, for example, to your mouse on a mouse button scheme. Others have a very elaborate system of using the keyboard. So the goal of this video is not to tell you you're doing something incorrectly, but to help you to think about at the beginning of a new expansion, what sorts of keybinds you might want to think about using. And if you are interested in maybe shifting away from a certain strategy you had that was clunky or uh, problematic, what could we maybe think about doing to improve your user interface experience? So um, the first thing I want you to think about is that there are kind of three major considerations when we're talking about keybinds that have to do with uh, using our fingers. The first one is f movement. The second one is maybe primary bindings that we're going to set up. And the third one is secondary bindings. So when we think about movement, we often go to the use of the mouse in combination with our WASD keys. So many, many games have uh, gone over to this system, which essentially mimics the arrow keys that are physically on your keyboard, but it's just a little more uh, useful for lots of different types of games to make use of the W, A, S, and D keys to go up, left, down, and right. And this is true for WoW. It's been a staple for a long time in this game that we have moved the functionality of the arrow keys on the keyboard over to the left side of the keyboard in order to maximize the use of other abilities. So um, you can see here that I have my W, A, S, and D, all of them bound, and we'll talk about what the significance of that is and maybe what we should be considering when we're thinking about movement. But the main one I want to talk about is the difference between strafing with your A key and your D key and turning. So by default, the game sets your A key and your D key to turn your character uh, around on the spot like this. If you press A, it'll turn your character to the left. If you press D, it'll turn them to the right. Now I'm doing that with my uh, mouse uh, just to demonstrate because I have already adjusted all of my characters so that A strafes to the left and D strafes to the right. And the reason I've done that is because though it's a bit of an, uh, a movement away and it takes a little bit getting used to, moving away from turning with your A and D key to strafing unlocks a lot of opportunity for you to be efficient in your gameplay. And it's one of the first things I would suggest when thinking about user interface and keyboard Get away from using your A and your D keys as turning tools and move them towards strafing tools. If you have them as turning tools, you'll probably be used to right-clicking and holding down your right mouse button in order to strafe as a result because this will interrupt the turning portion and make your character strafe. But having this as an ability to do irrespective of your mouse hand offers you the opportunity to get out of mechanics that might hit you like big uh, balls that are flying at you or... Uh, ground that you need to move out of without relying on the use of your mouse. This is actually really important for any of the healing classes. So especially if you're working with mouse over macros, which we'll touch on in another video, where you're looking at a, a set of bars either up here to your left or below your character, and you're needing to click on things to press it, freeing up your mouse hand to do whatever it would like to do irrespective of movement is pretty useful. Um, it allows you to sidestep, for example, without... Um, in involving your mouse holding down and doing that. So I would say the very first thing I would suggest to anybody evaluating their UI is to take a look at movement and specifically make their A and D strafe. And you can do that by going into the key bindings and going to the movement keys. And you can see uh, instead of turning left and turning right, you make them as strafe left and strafe right. You can see I have them set here. Second question when it comes to movement and the WASD keys is should I have my S key bound for backpedaling? 
And you can see that I do have it set for backpedaling. There's a lot of people who would say that's incorrect. It breeds bad patterns of uh, playing gameplay. So, because the reason for that, of course, is that when you press S and you backpedal, you move at a slower rate than if you press your up key to run. So they would suggest instead of backpedaling, you merely angle your mouse and use your strafing keys to get out of anything you'd like. This also is important for healers or DPS players to get used to doing that. And while I agree in, in general that you should try to avoid pressing the backpedal button because it'll slow you down, there are a couple instances where it's useful. And I think every single spec or role can make use of the S key. And I don't think there's really a lot of reason to unbind it or to rebind. Uh, it takes a lot of extra effort. Tanks especially make use of the S key, I think, in movement. And so it's a good UI piece to keep as part of their kit. What do I mean by that? If you're tanking, you have a huge boss, but you don't want to move it very far. Strafing and turning your back to the boss can sometimes cause you to take more damage. So you want to avoid that. Using the S key to just back it into the exact right spot you want is sometimes useful. That covers the basics of the WASD. Again, with your mouse, you're looking at a couple of options, left clicking and right clicking. Left clicking will turn your camera around. So if you're auto attacking a boss, you can still look at what's going on around you in the map while holding down the left key. It'll just move your, wind, your mirror. Right clicking will still turn your character around as well, but you can use this in combination if you don't move away from turning to strafing and you can move your character. Just be aware of the uses of your mouse um, as far as your UI is concerned. Okay, that moves us to our second consideration, which is what should we be thinking about for the primary bindings? What would somebody suggest you look at if you wanted to get the main abilities that you're going to use? And this is a very much a personal preference type of thing. A lot of you will have a complete configuration for all of your buttons, and that's excellent. If you are thinking about how do I add to my current setup, um, what I would suggest is considering the following. Think about uh, a concise arrangement on your keyboard of the following eight pieces, your Q, E, R, and F keys, and also your one, two, three, four keys. Those are the ones that are most accessible to you as a player in, in your gameplay. Q, E, R, and F are in close proximity to your movement skills, so it's not out of reach for you. And I tend to put all of my most important abilities along that row. So all of my builders for Rep Paladin uh, and my main spender go QERF. They can be used while you're strafing. Um, you can easily move your ring finger keys. Any of your fingers can interact with that while you're moving around, so it's not too hard. You can also be jumping while doing this rotation. You don't have to reach very far. Likewise, too, with one, two, three, and four, they are also fairly close to the range, um, and I have a lot of my main abilities set to those, um, those basic eight. QERF is very cramped, though, as far as your primary bindings are concerned. A lot of you will look at this video and say, wow, QERF are just so close to movement. I feel like I could never do that. That's My finger's gonna be balled up like this. And while I agree to some extent, this is very much a personal preference thing. My main point actually when talking about primary bindings is to find eight major ones, the most important ones that you can reach. Maybe that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and R, F, T, something like that. Whatever it is for you, you want to think about simplifying. If I was going to start with somebody from scratch who had no sense of key bindings, I would begin them with these, these eight because they're really accessible, they don't require you to look down at your keyboard to, to press, and they don't require you to stretch your fingers too far to interact with. The third major consideration is how to get to secondary bindings. And so for the final piece of this video, I'm gonna suggest the following. You can start to think about their uses for your shift, your alt, and your control keys. These are all on a keyboard on the bottom left and also they appear on the bottom right, though it's harder to access the bottom right when you're playing WoW because you're usually your mouse hand, which is generally speaking the right, or if you're, um, is makes it inaccessible. If you are a left-handed mouse user, then you will probably invert all of this information and you may have something like I, J, K, and L 
already selected, so you would be using that portion of the keyboard. But for those of us who are right-handed with our mouse and left-handed with our hand on WASD, um, I suggest thinking about adding to your kit of keybinds the shift key, the alt key, and the control key to match up with, in my case, QERF, one, two, three, four, but for you, maybe it's a little bit of a broader range. So the reason I like this is it immediately uh, allows me to keep my fingers essentially in the same range, but I can just add on with my pinky finger, pressing shift or control, and maybe with my thumb, alt, and you can move these around and get used to them but it keeps them all in the same range so that my muscle memory doesn't have to move too far and I can stay on task. Now this may take some getting used to and you may have a completely different setup, but if you were looking to start from scratch with any of your characters, I would say that the most important uh, modifier is going to be shift. That's the one that's most easily accessible. It's the largest one, followed by alt, which is the thumb, and I find control is the hardest to get to. It's not that difficult, but you have to you know, move your pinky down from shift and further away. So it's the furthest one away on the keyboard if we're thinking about space and the kind of energy that it takes to press it, but you'll get used to it um, if, you, if you move towards these control pieces. Another set that you might look for for adding on to your utility is to look at the T, G, Z, X, C keys and on the number side, five and six may come into the range. So some of you will, these are the keys that you're actually going to in general because you don't like the Q, E, R, and F and that's completely fine if you're using six and seven, but these are the keys that start to get further and further away and make you less efficient overall as you move your left hand away from your movement skills. Different specs are going to require different levels of busyness, meaning they will have more keys that they have to account for, either because they have more utility to account for or because their rotation requires that they have access to far more than just the basic set. Most specs can get within that eight keybind window the majority of their uh, pieces, both their builders and spenders, their main cooldowns like their, um, you know, their big cooldown for a DPS or a healer, whether it's salvation or um, hymns for priests or your raptures for the disc side, whether it's your totems for shaman or if it's vendetta, if you're a rogue, those kinds of things. Any of those major cooldowns that are one or th one to three minutes, you know, combustion, arcane power, all that kind of stuff. That can all fit usually within the eight pieces. So you'll have um, eight major keybinds that you want to focus on. But for the secondary ones, I would suggest, especially if you have alts, that you want to make this consistent. So for myself, um, my shift one, shift two keys tend to be associated with some kind of defensive piece on every single one of my characters. So something that applies to myself. In the Paladin's case, that's my major defensive uh, piece and also my bubble. For my alt keys, I tend to use alt 1, 2, 3, 4 to interact in some way with lockdown or stuns or interrupts. And I, I set that um, as all of, all of my characters have that kind of piece. And then in the control list, I tend to put some of my other utility. You'll find that each of the specs that you use will require a different arrangement, but just get used to the idea of mapping out something that you can consistently come back to when you're thinking about your keybinds. They need not be as cramped as this by moving around the WASD keys with QERF, but I find that that's the best place to start when I'm trying to help people. One of the most important things to communicate from this video is that you should have as many of your abilities bound as possible. If you're the kind of person who has routinely been going to click a button that you press maybe once or twice in an encounter, consider developing a new keybind strategy that allows you to uh, the opportunity to bind that to something on your keyboard. It is a huge liability to try and move your mouse down and find among a huge set of bars, or over here I have mine on my left side, some button that you need to press in an emergency, whether that's um, a hymn for a healer, or you're pressing revival, uh, which is a major CD. Or if you're going to press your major cooldown as a DPS player like Crusade or something like that. These buttons should be assigned to some kind of key binding. And the reason for that 
is sometimes you get lost or you misclick or you, you go to find it and you end up pressing heroism or lust by accident. Uh, or in the heat of battle, you, you're looking away from the center of your character where there's some ground effect you need to get out of and you're desperately trying to find your uh, desperate prayer or some other uh, defensive tool that you're using and you're not in time. Instead, mapping out a key binding strategy that offers you upwards of 16 or 20 binds, that should cover you for any circumstance. And then that gives you an opportunity when you're sitting at the dummies or you're leveling up to actually practice using them. So you can get into all of your alt keys. You can um, start thinking about your control keys. You can work on your shift keys. Just having those mapped out offers you the opportunity to, to use them and not to waste them when you're in the middle of an encounter. So some of you, again, most of you will have some set of a user interface for your bindings already set up. The video is designed to help you think about what you can do to improve that. If you'd like some help, you can obviously let me know and I can chat about uh, rearranging things for you or helping you to think about your bindings. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this has been a helpful way to think about user interface. See you next time.